Hello there, this is Sublime Ant, and today I'd like to share with you a neat little way of organizing your factories in Factorio. Uh, I haven't really seen this way of organizing your factories before, and I thought it would be yeah, something that maybe the community want to check out. Well, it all started about a week ago when I saw someone on YouTube do this kind of setup here. Let's see. So we creating some belts. All right, let's get this hooked up here. Almost there. There we go. So, the interesting thing about this is that the input line to the assembly machine area is in the center of the area. So machines on both sides of the iron line can use it directly. And then the gears are just directly inserted into this assembly machine. So I thought, oh, that's pretty cool. Seems like it's a very useful concept. Let's see what else we can do with this. So I spent quite some time playing around with this. And it actually turns out that you can almost build anything using this kind of layout where the input is in the center of whatever you're trying to build. So let's, just, let's show some examples. Let's try and build some inserters. Alright, inserters. And inserters need gear, electronic circuits, and iron plate. So the way I will lay this out is like this. Got some circuits there, got some gears here. They all go there. And as in this example, we will make the inputs come to the center area here. Let's see here, something like that. And as you can see, all the machines can reach the resources they need very simply. So for example, I can uh, make the, I can connect the circuits with the iron like this in the same way here click the iron to the inserters and then iron to the gears and then here we'll put the copper cables and they'll be connected to the circuits I think that should do it, let's try this out yep, there we go getting inserters created at a very high pace very nice so as you can see, this is a very compact layout, and uh, it's very extendable, still. Because you see the output here, or not the output, but like, yeah, you know, the iron and copper are available at the bottom. So if we wanted to, we could just make a copy of this and put it right there at the bottom. And now we have twice as many inserters being made. Very neat. So, yeah, the method of building factories that I'm trying to explain here is you keep your inputs, the, the copper, iron, whatever you're, you're using, in the center of the area where you're building. And then intermediate stages, for example, circuits, you'll just continue your iron and copper using underground belts. So you can still extend this as long as you want, but it's still very compact and everyone can just grab whatever they want right from the center area there. Very useful. So let's see what else we can do with this. This is some pretty simple examples, but let's get a little bit more advanced. I'm gonna just copy this input area here that's representing the bus in our factory. And let's extend it. So let's say we're working on blue science. Blue science needs filter inserters. So let's let's jump on that. Okay, here we go. So it's also possible to build using this layout, quite simply. 
let's put the filtering center here. So that will need a lot of things. So we will need fast inserters, and they require inserters, and then we're gonna need a lot of circuits for this. So in the same way, you see I will I will have the resources come from the top and we can just go under the circuits. Like so. And actually let's move this a little bit. I think we will want this here. Something like that. And let's get some iron here too. Right. So now we have our main input set up, coming from the main bus. And now we need to actually build something. Let's do it. So I'm gonna do something like this, where we have circuits. cables and then the gears and the gears I'm going to make connected to this guy by underground belts so let's do something like this that's the connection and then we're gonna need need them here. Okay, so let's just put this in the center instead. Sorry about that. So let's move this here. Okay, there we go. Now the gears can reach them and also that is I can reach them. So setters need iron and these guys need iron. And then we need to connect the circuits. Okay. I think we are about ready to start adding our sitters here, okay. Something like that, and then we have to hook everything up like that. And then main output here are the filtering sitters. Let's see how we do there. I probably missed something. We'll find out. Okay, so same idea as previously. We just have the resources flowing from the main bus away downwards like this. And we can just grab resources as we need them right from it. And it seems like we're up and running. We are creating some filtering setters at a pretty good pace. Not the fastest pace, but it's, it should be enough to get started with blue science. Alright, and it's very compact and it's extendable. You can just make another one of these. Actually at least make a little edit here. Let's get these from the other side. So we take the iron there and then when it comes up here we grab some iron like that. It makes it a little bit more compact. So now, let's just make a copy of that, boom, and down there. And if I did everything correctly, <laughs> I don't know if I did, uh, it seems like it's right. We should get some some more filtering setters now. Here we have it. Very common way of doing filtering setters, and all you need as input is copper and iron. And that's the main advantage of this method that you never need green circuits or copper cables on belts. They will just be created at the spot and it just makes it a lot easier to maintain your factory so you don't have to yeah, carry around green circuits everywhere that I think at least they make it your factory is like a little messy and it's just so much to handle and yeah this is a lot ni nicer. Very simple. All you need for input is copper and iron. 
So let's, let's keep working here on our uh, blue signs. So another thing we need are red circuits. Let's see if we can create the same kind of layout for red circuits. And I'll give you a hint. It's possible. So let's lay this out. definitely the most complicated example of the ones we've created so far, so hopefully I will be able to keep everything straight. I think we're looking good here. Alright, that should do it. So let's get our inputs here. We will need all of these. Get some iron there, and finally some plastic. Let's just make a little thingy here. Why not? Okay. There we go. Got all the resources we need. So, and same as before, we just make sure we are using underground belts to get further down. And now we should be able to, yeah, get started. So the interesting thing here is that we actually need some copper cables for the red circuits. So I'm gonna make them come down. I'm gonna use some of these for the red circuits. Like that. And now we just need to hook these up and then make sure the red circuits got everything they need. So need plastic. They need uh, actual green circuits. And then, oh wait, they need to be long, okay. And then we need copper cables. And there you have it. Now we just need to get some power here. And this is going to be a little tricky here. We need to, to be able to reach. It should be possible. We just do that, then do something like that, and then... Just go under it. All right, it's up and running. You can see they're working away here. All four of them, and that's about it. We got a very nice and compact filter inserter plus red circuit combo that can be fed right into your blue science production. Alright, so let's just show that this is extendable. So we can take the same thing and just create a copy here. Like that. And these are actually pretty balanced. This setup here will create about equal amounts of filter inserters and red circuits. In a very nice square shape. I like it. Okay, so that's about what I wanted to show you today, but let's let's do one more thing here. So one thing that I always find very hard and frustrating is blue circuits or processing units there's just so many steps to them, and yeah, it's easy to mess it up, and it's just, yeah, it can easily be a big mess. But using this layout, it's actually fairly simple. Let's check it out. So I'm gonna do this kind of shape, and have it laid out like this. 
So the processing unit needs red circuits and green circuits. So let's get that hooked up. And it also needs sulfuric acid. Like that. And I'm gonna say gonna create some some sulfuric acid source here. By the way, I'm using uh, the creative mode mod, if you're wondering how I'm able to just create resources like this. Very handy for doing demonstrations like this. Let's, okay. There we are. So, let's get some resources going here. all of them. Okay, almost there. There we go. And I also need to make sure that the red circuit gets it copper cables, so I'm gonna use some of these to go there, just by going under there, the input, and then just let's just connect everything. I think that should be it. Let's try it out. Might have missed something. We'll find out. Let's store these in a chest. See, we're making red circuits, good, and green circuits, and now, let's see here, we have 20, there we go, we are creating processing units, and this setup is actually pretty balanced, it takes about twice as long to make processing units as it takes to make advanced circuits, and we need two for this one, so it's going to be fairly balanced, as you will find out now. There it's finished, and then oh, did I miss something? <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah, it takes a while for it to buffer up the circuits, but from this point on, it should actually be be balanced. Let's just see that that's true. So now we're almost done, and then it finishes, and then there we go. So that's it's still like one second of downtime between each. It's not too bad. And then it's obviously you can just upgrade these to yellow if you want further, like higher output. And the best thing about this is once again it's extendable. Let's create another copy. Or couple of copies. Ta -da. And there, that's how easy it is to create a lot of processing units in a very compact and extendable way. Alright, I think that's about what I had today. Hopefully this little video was helpful to you. And let me know what you think of this kind of setup. I personally like it and I've used it to beat the game in six hours. On peaceful mode, not with biters. That's probably harder. But still, I like it. It's very convenient. Thanks. See you later.